what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Sephira ROM yes I have made a previous video on this particular ROM which was about two weeks ago as you can see this is the 30 June 2022 build that I have made a video on but this one the latest one is of 14 July 2022 I was previously using this ROM so I just updated it by just dirty flashing with the recovery and if you don't know how to clean flash this ROM you can check out the description and if you want to dirty flash this ROM just flash the latest zip file with your like current recovery and that should work perfectly fine I'll recommend the latest TWRP recoveries all the links that I'm talking about will be present in the description so do not worry so first of all let me tell you that the changes are minor but yes there are a couple of changes that I'll show you but this ROM is also F2FS based if you're noticing so overall the speed everywhere is just super fast here we have the MIUI camera pre-built so you are getting the ANX camera or MIUI camera working perfectly I have been using this ROM for more than two weeks now and my experience overall has been really really amazing on this particular project Zephyrus ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro but first of all let me show you the about section so in here we are still getting the project Zephyrus logo up top but here in the Android version section earlier it used to show only Android 12 easter egg but right now it will show this latest of like the Android 12 L kind of easter egg so that's cool this is with the latest update and here of course you are getting the latest security patch of July 5th 2022 and the project Sephira's version right now is 12.7 I, earlier I think it was 12.6 and here we have the stock kernel as the Vantom kernel 4.14.286 and device maintainer is of course the use in the system panel right now we are getting a system updater from there you can check for updates but right now it shows the update check failed for some reason i don't know if there is a newer update if it will work or not but yes the updater is there in the newer update and of course we are still getting all the customizations that were there previously and if you want to check out the previous video you can definitely do that you will see all the like features and stuff of this term here in this video i'm just gonna show you a gist about it but yeah let me show you we have the quick tap or the back tap and advanced reboot and stuff long press power and toggle touch and we have the system navigation gestures and in here we get both the length and the radius customization for the fill bar immersive gesture bar option is there and we have a lot more customization and swipe to invoke assistant and stuff are working perfectly fine here two button three button navigations are still there and we get the swipe to screenshot and with that right now we have the share edit delete and the capture mode feature and if you want to capture more stuff just like this you can do that and if you want to save it or you can edit it even more you can definitely do that you can add some text if you want to just like this and yeah you can definitely customize it however you would like to let me just delete the screenshot from here and we have the one-handed mode that should be working perfectly fine here and we have the prevent training music control and the fingerprint vibrations but yes there is the thermal profiles this is simply the thermal profiles which were there earlier and talking about the refresh rate and stuff and yes 120 hertz is working perfectly fine if you're looking at this test you have a website if you're noticing i have been getting 120 hertz pretty fine it's working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with 120 hertz refresh rate overall in the ui and even while like scrolling and stuff in twitter let me actually show you and i just opened the app so let me just reload it and right now if i scroll just notice how smoothly it's scrolling no problems whatsoever with 120 hertz at all and yes it's been working perfectly fine almost and yes there are minor stutters here and there but yes mostly 120 hertz has been working perfectly fine here and talking about stock camera it has been amazing experience i would say we are getting the ultra wide angle lens working perfectly fine the 2x zooming option is there that works fine and even the main sensor is of course working fine and if you're looking at the front camera and stuff yes front camera right now is working yes i have done a cpu rebolling on this device because front camera was broken for me afterwards i did not face any problem after doing the cpu rebolling job so yeah even the portrait mode and stuff is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with that and even in the video settings if you go you will get up to 10 to be 30 fps for the front camera and if you switch to the rear camera you will get up to 4k 30 fps option and all these options will stay in the pro mode too so if you want to shoot pro mode videos with like shutter speed and stuff control you can definitely do that up to 4k 30 fps that's just awesome so stock camera is still MIUI camera and in terms of the home screen you are still getting the pixel launcher so there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but there is double tap to sleep on the street as bar and this is how the always on display looks like and right now what i like about this rom is that like the pickup gesture and stuff i have set it up from the ambient display settings and if i pick up the device it shows this kind of a notification kind of thing 
if you're looking at the edge kind of notification over here so yeah it looks beautiful i would say once you are picking up the device if you're noticing that so yeah if you have any notification it will show you the color of that notification on the sides like the edges and it looks beautiful and if you're looking at the few bits current speed just notice how smoothly it works is it's unlocked perfectly fine let me show you one more time with this and yeah the animation if you're looking at it looks beautiful even while you are just pressing the power button it does this kind of animation looks beautiful and if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it has unlocked and yes face unlock i have already set it that up too and if i swipe up as you can see there is the black border on the front camera and face unlock is still working perfectly fine even the double tap to sleep and stuff from the always on display is working fine if you're noticing i mean the double tap to sleep and the double tap to wake both are working fine from the always on display if you're noticing and right now to use the face unlock if i swipe up again as you can see it's working perfectly fine and if i show you the app lock here this is how the app locking ui looks like and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks perfectly fine so this rom is definitely one of the most stable that i have seen Also, if you're wondering about the vault calling and stuff, yes, vault calling is working perfectly fine. But in the stock dialer, there is no call recording option if you're looking for that. But yes, you get the Google dialer and vault calling again is working fine. So right now I have connected to this Bluetooth headset and here, as you can see, there is that Bluetooth battery icon. So you will get to see the Bluetooth battery stats and stuff over there. And here as well in the quick setting panel, you will see that the battery percentage shows up for the Bluetooth device. But let me actually show you, this is a bug still, I would say that if you're connected to a Bluetooth device and if you try to switch the output audio, as you can see, the UI just kind of force closes for once, then you have to unlock the device once. So yeah, this is the bug that I have been facing that I cannot really switch the output device over here once I'm connected to Bluetooth, but otherwise definitely you can switch up Bluetooth or just disconnect the Bluetooth device that should work perfectly fine. But yeah, this is the bug that I have faced. And here the like widgets and stuff are working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. This Android 12 L kind of clock widgets and the animations if you're noticing are working perfectly fine here. Talking about the quick setting panel, it has all the quick setting panel toggles that were there earlier. And we also have the reboot toggle and stuff if you are looking at all these. And we still have the advanced reboot options. That's not a problem. Now again, talking about the overall performance, it's been amazingly smooth and here in terms of the battery life, the battery life has been decent. We also get the sleep mode right now. And here you can choose the sleep mode once you are turning it on. You can choose what things to turn off or turn on. And we have the suspend actions option. The left battery text option is there and the idle manager is there. And the battery temperature also shows up, but there is no charging cycle seeing option over here. And here we get all the battery icons and we also have the big dot circle and stuff. But I have been using with the icon landscape. I think this icons looks beautiful over here. And also you can actually enable the battery percentage and stuff from right here. And let me show you the battery life that I have been getting. I have tested this with the Aku battery app. And with that, as you can see, I have got about nine hours of screen on time on average, I would say. So the battery life overall has been really good on this particular ROM. I do not have any complaints as such in terms of the battery life. In the health section, I have about 91% battery health left. Here it shows. So the device is actually year old. I would say more than a year old. The battery health, I mean, is good. So yeah, the battery life that I'm getting is good enough. And here the fast charging of 33 watts and stuff are working fine. No problems whatsoever that I have faced. And in terms of the sound settings, yes, the sound quality overall is great. And you have all the newer features like the mute media volume on silent mode, the screenshots are sound, etc. And the Mi Audio Direct is still there. We get all these like preset options for the Mi Audio Direct and the presets you can choose from right here. And we have the smart scenes and the Hi-Fi Audio option is there too. Also, we have the haptic feedback and stuff. So all these things are still there. We have this auto play feature, per app volume control. Everything is still present. In terms of the display settings, you still have the monitor theme engine and stuff. You get the black theme or the complete pitch black and the quick setting brightness slider option is there. And you can also change the position of it from right here. We have the brightness control by just sliding a finger on the status bar the dark theme, the extra dim, etc. is there. And the brightness quality has been fixed earlier. The brightness used to glitch up, but in this particular update, the brightness has been fixed almost. And in the status bar items, we get the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons, mic camera privacy icons, the double tap to sleep on status bar. And we have the fonts and stuff. We still have amazing or plethora amount of fonts. The colored status bar icons are there. You can you know, use it if you want to. The footer alerts option is there. And we have the full screen apps, 
the smooth display or force 120 hertz display option is there pocket detection option is there the double tap to wake and the double tap to sleep on lock screen is there and the wake up on plug and stuff this is how the display setting is and yes the benchmarks you can see from right here the android 20 geekbench score with the cpu stress test so that you can get an idea about the performance and in terms of the pubg settings we are getting the smooth 90 fps in combat and also in lobby settings you can see we are getting smooth and 90 fps and here if i show you the home of this pubg or bgmi as you can see it's pretty smooth so as you can see everywhere i'm getting pretty good fps and yes definitely i can say this is 90 fps it shows 120 but it's actually running at 90 fps over here according to the settings so yeah everywhere if i am moving around and stuff just notice how smooth and snappy it is So after gaming for about 15 minutes I would say the device is getting quite warm and I can feel it on the back. So let's just quickly go home and let's see what's the temperature. So yes it's about 40 degrees Celsius if you are noticing. So yep after gaming definitely the device gets hot but that's not a huge issue. It's getting capped at about 40 degrees Celsius so that's fine I would say. So after about 20 minutes of gaming, I would say the device temperature has reached about 44 degrees. So yes, the device definitely gets hot while gaming, but yes, that's supposed to happen. And yes, the gaming performance was great. We can get smooth 90 FPS over here in BGMI. So that's fine. If you're a gamer, that should be helpful. So overall, I would say the Project Zephyrus ROM is definitely one of the best as of right now, based on Android 12 L for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And yes, I have been daily driving this ROM for a long time now and I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Let me in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.